Photoshop just added native support for a very exciting file format called WebP. In this tutorial, you'll learn three critical reasons why you should start exporting your images with a new WebP standard instead of JPEG or PNG, and one important watch out. Let's dive right into exporting by going up to File, Save a Copy. We don't want Save or Save As, but Save a Copy is where we can go and set the file format over to WebP. If you don't see this, you either need to update your version of Photoshop or check that you're inside the Save a Copy dialog. We can then choose our name and we always want to embed the color profile and then click save where we get the options for WebP. And in here are two of the main benefits of this format. The first is that we can use a lossless format, meaning that there is no JPEG artifacting whatsoever. We're just saving this image exactly like an 8-bit TIFF. It doesn't support 16-bit, so this will be converted to 8, but for outputting to the web, that's perfectly fine and there's no loss of quality as an 8-bit image. The second benefit here is we can also switch over to a lossy format, meaning we can compress the image and at higher levels of quality, we should get an image which is going to be a very nice looking image, but considerably smaller. And what's important here is that at some setting here, these are not directly comparable to JPEG, but an 80 quality here in WebP is some quality in JPEG. And when you output an image that matches the quality, what you're gonna see is that the file size of WebP is actually quite a bit smaller. So this is the second benefit of this file format is that you can retain the same quality and get a smaller file. Or conversely, if you've been sacrificing your quality in order to shrink your files when you put them on your website or send them over email, you can get that quality back within a file size that works for you. And then we also have options for including XMP metadata like keywords, XF metadata like your uh, camera shutter speed, and then Photoshop extras like uh, paths, guides, and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna include all these. I'm gonna set this to high, which is 75 quality. And generally speaking, I would say between 75 and 100 lossy is probably what you should choose. Lossless if you need it, or you can take the lossy down to about 50, but there will be some noticeable loss of quality below about 75 for most images. So we'll just choose 75 here, say okay, and the image has already been saved as WebP, which notice that is visible in the Mac operating system. So we have native support so very handy file format to work with. The next benefit of this file format is that it also supports transparency. So if we take our image and if I just quickly, let's say roughly select the sky, invert that and put a layer mask so that I've made this background more or less transparent. It's not a good job, but let's say we're trying to hide this because it's gonna overlay something else on our website and we wanna preserve transparency. Well, if you were to save this as a JPEG, it's just gonna convert all these transparent pixels to white. But with WebP, we can actually save it and preserve our transparency. So we'll save a copy, we'll switch over to WebP, save, we're gonna replace our existing image, and I'll just choose the same option, say okay, and then we'll see here it's been updated. It does show with a transparent background here just because that's the way that things get previewed in the Mac operating system. But if we double click it, it's gonna open our WebP image and you see that we do have our transparency. So this is really nice because if you're using PNG to get transparency for images you've cut out of products on your website or something like that, this is gonna give you a much smaller file size, but still let you work with the transparency you can't get inside of JPEG. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this mask. I should just delete it and just show you another way you can export this. If you're working with WebSharp Pro, you can just go into the settings and I'm also gonna turn on the new border options for a secondary border. I'm gonna go over to general and set the file format over to WebP. It's now natively supported in WebSharp Pro. Click on sharpen and it will run the whole process and save for us here as a WebP image. And you can see it's been exported with a new dual border with a thin stripe around the image and the thicker black border that I wanted. But as a WebP, that's gonna help save on file size. So let's close that and take a closer look now at a couple of comparison images I've already created. What I've done is I already processed these two images a couple different ways. Let's start with the same image here. And what I've done is I saved it as a TIFF and then I saved it as a WebP lossless and all these other file formats and then put everything into the same layered file so we can directly compare these. And I've ordered them so that the biggest file is down on the bottom. You can see the file size in parentheses and then it gets to smaller files as we go up the stack. And the color coding is my representation of quality. Green meaning that I see no difference between the original and any of these here. These are all very high quality exports. The ones that are showing in yellow are a little bit lower quality and we'll get to this image here where there's some further degradation in these ones that are marked orange. So with this image here, 
We've got the original 8-bit TIFF that I saved because this was a 16. I converted to 8 and saved it as a TIFF for comparison. And it comes out to about 2,500K or 2.5 megabytes. Pretty big file as you would expect for a TIFF. When I saved it as a lossless image, there's no visible change in this image, but it's now down to 1800K. So it's a nice file savings over the TIFF, but at the exact same quality. Not similar, but the exact same pixel for pixel quality. We can zoom in here, turn this on and off, and there's no difference at all because it is completely lossless. Now, if we step up to a JPEG with quality 12, the image here is going to be a little bit different if we get into the details, but fundamentally the quality really is pretty much the same. There's no real obvious difference here. And the file got even smaller using this lossy format. So we're now down to 1100K. So this is definitely a case where I would say you don't need lossless. Let's go ahead and lose a little quality and shrink the file further. Then the next one is WebP at 100 quality. And here you see that the image again is, you know, there's little differences in the wood here, things like that, but it's pretty much the same thing. And we're zoomed in to 800%. So if we go back to anything reasonable, even at like 200%, you're just not going to see a difference here. So I would say that, you know, these are really pretty much the same image. And in doing this, we've gone from 1200K down to 600K with a WebP. So it's gotten to be about half the file size with excellent quality. And of course, JPEG 10 quality is getting even smaller down at 492K. And it's really not showing any real difference either. I can go down to WebP at 90 quality and I'm down to 337K. So it's getting quite a bit smaller even than this JPEG 10 and still at a quality level that I would consider no different from the original. So it's an excellent looking image. Now, of course, we can compress either of these even further. Once we get down to JPEG quality 8, I feel like there's some important differences. You might not, you might feel it's okay, but see, we've got all this JPEG artifact here. And if we look at the quality here, compared to the, the WebP at 90, there's definitely a loss of quality with the JPEG starting to show these little artifacts and noise and other problems. So to me, this is a bit inferior, but you might find that when you're zoomed out to 100%, it's perfectly fine. So it's really a question of what are your needs? What are you willing to work with? But I would say that for me, this is more optimal. There's really no loss of quality. Even if you pinch and zoom in on a website, you're not going to see any issues here. Now we can go even further down to WebP at 85 quality, which I actually think looks a bit nicer and is even smaller than the JPEG. So again, you're seeing this improvement in quality and reduction in file size with WebP over the JPEG. And if we drop all the way down to 75 quality on this thing, we're starting to have further degradation, but I would say if we compare the WebP at 75 versus the JPEG at 8, that my personal sense is that I think that the WebP probably looks a little better. It doesn't have the noise in the sky in some of those images. So to me, if I'm going to really push the quality here, I'd probably go with the WebP, which is a 170K file instead of a 286K JPEG. So you can really get these down to nice small files. And this begs the question, well, why not just use WebP all the time? And that's what brings us to the caveat that I want to share. And this is kind of an obscure and interesting thing that happens with WebP. Watch what happens to the quality of this virgin sign here and here with these high frequency color, meaning that the, the color is very small and rapidly changing. Now with the lossless, there's no change. With the JPEG, there's no change. With the high quality JPEG, there's no change. Once I get to a lossy, WebP, there is a change and it's subtle here zoomed out. So you might be perfectly fine with it and probably most people are. But if we zoom into it even closer, let's take a look at this comparison. And here you really start to see it. The edges don't look as crisp. And then look at this neon sign down below here where it's very vibrant in the original and it's quite a bit more muted in WebP. There's a loss of color quality. And if we just compare it to the original, here's where we started. And here's what has happened with WebP. If we zoom in even closer and you really see the detail here, see that just loss of color saturation and detail. Now, whether this matters to you or not is really a personal question, but I just want you to be aware of it. I've only found it to be the case when you have things like this small area of very saturated detail. If we look at something like the taxi cabs, they're not showing a lot of difference, but the taillights are. The Planet Hollywood sign, that's showing a difference. If we look around the image here at other parts here, you see that it's really showing up in things like 
these neon signs or in the traffic lights. So to me, if you're working with a night scene and artificial lighting, something that's a really saturated small light, which is the kind of thing you're going to see in cityscapes at night, you might want to watch out for WebP. Now notice that at WebP 100, we've lost quality here. So that's where I started saying between the lossless WebP and the lossy, there's an important difference. And here, this really highlights the difference with this high frequency color, a 100 WebP is absolutely not the same as a lossless WebP. So that's kind of a watch out. And let's jump down to the JPEG at quality eight. And notice here that while the JPEG has a little bit more noise, it does have better retention of the original color in this image. And for that reason, I actually think that this is a little bit higher quality. And that's why I marked it in the yellow instead of this orange. This kind of a scene like this, you know, as you start really pushing the quality down, it might not work for you for WebP. So when it comes to this kind of a cityscape, you may not want to use WebP. But in general, most images are going to work much more like this one. And WebP is going to give you the ability to get to a high quality file at a much smaller file size. And to learn more about WebSharp Pro, now click to this next video.